The Mayberry Investments Limited Virtual Investor Forum has been the standard for investor education in Jamaica for decades, where top financial minds provide comprehensive insight into the market and ideal investment strategies and opportunities for our clients. Celebrating 37 years of excellence in investment banking. The Mayberry Virtual Investor Forum. Investing in Jamaica. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our Virtual Investor Forum. I'm your host, Dan Theok, Senior Vice President of Investment Banking here at Mayberry Investments Limited. Joining us today, thank you. Joining us today is none other than Mr. Kadeen Mayers, CEO of Dollar Financial Services Limited, um, in a highly anticipated forum. Kadeen will be giving us an investor update on the success of the company and, of course, how they've done post IPO. Before we get started, we know our viewers can't wait to hear from the man himself, so we encourage you to post your questions in the chat and be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more insights on your favorite companies listed on the GSC. Now let's talk Dollar Financial Services. Dollar Financial Services Limited was incorporated on October 14, 2009. The company is a subsidiary of First Rock Private Equity Limited, which owns 60% of Dollar's shares post IPO. Dollar's initial objective was to provide a full suite of financial services to the public. The company was organized into three divisions, namely the Loan Financing Division, the Remittance and Bill Payments Division, and previously the Cambio Division. Dollar Financial Services foresees significant growth in its loan portfolio and throughout the Caribbean. The company is now listed on the GSC after a very successful listing in June of this year. We expect to see lots of growth for the company, so a quick reminder that if you're looking for sound advice from experts who can assist you in expanding your portfolio or embark on your very first investment journey, Mayberry Investments should be your first and only choice. Follow us on social media or visit our website at www.mayberryinv.com to learn more. Now let's introduce you to our guest for this evening. Mr. Kadeem Mears serves as CEO of Dollar Financial Services Limited. He's responsible for the execution of Dollar's business strategy, operating guidelines, and internal controls. Kadeen has a proven track record of performance in the area of entrepreneurship, change management, organizational restructuring, credit and risk administration, process efficiency, and human resource development. He also serves as director for Dollar Financials in Guyana, a subsidiary of Dollar Financial Jamaica. Lastly, Kadeen is the founder of Dequity Capital Management, an associate shareholder of Dollar Financials, owning 20%. So folks, join me to welcome Mr. Kadeen Mayers to our forum once again. Welcome, Kadeen. How are you doing? Um, not doing bad at all. Feels good to be back, Dan. Great, great to have you back. Great to have you back, and especially after that spectacular IPO where you guys uh, were successful in attracting over $5 billion in uh, investors despite only... Uh, looking to raise five hundred million dollars, so it was you know crazy oversubscribed. Congratulations! Thanks a lot, man. And I wish to note that since um, IPO, that stock's traded up solidly to about three dollars fifty. We've seen almost a billion dollars worth of shares trading on the market post IPO. So, folks, this isn't just IPO hype. Uh, stocks been trading with relatively good liquidity at three dollars and higher. So that's impressive. Congratulations again. Thanks. Okay, before we jump into the Q&A, I want to do a quick uh, analysis of the company just to look at um, results. And I think we have the six-month results to June 2022, guys. So if you all can pop that up, I'd like to talk a little bit about that to give the audience uh, some insight. So first slide, I want to talk a little bit about the financial performance. And here we're looking at the half-year results to June 2022. And, uh, you know, what's impressive is not just the growth in total assets, which are up by over 100%, and the growth in the uh, profitability, which is up by over 400% to $119 million. But when you look at the trailing earnings of the business, we can see that that's $227 million. So 12-month trailing earnings, $227 million, over 143% growth. 
You see their loan book growing substantially, total assets up to $1.19 billion at the time, uh, net profit for the half year, $119 million, which is you know, substantial growth over the prior year, and the business just looks like it's you know, set to take off. And this is before, uh, you know, I believe they've had a full chance to deploy the proceeds that they received out of the IPO, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Yes and future growth um, prospects for the business. Stock is trading as at yesterday at $3.51. I'm sure it closed a little bit higher today. It closed at three fifty four. Three fifty four today, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So it's still climbing, yeah. still climbing. And it's trading, you know, a little bit rich at a 39 times PE ratio from a trailing earnings perspective, but it's clear that the market is thinking of dollar on a forward basis. And I like to think of, you know, reasonable average PE for the market at 20 times. And so if you look at the total shares outstanding, about $2.5 billion, that's telling me, Kadeen, that the market's expecting you to make $400 million profit per year going forward to justify your stock <laughs> price. So you got a little bit of work Yeah, to do. I got some work to do. We'll have some time, though. Yeah, you have lots of time. Yeah. We'll be talking about it. We'll be getting into it. Next slide, I want to just show you guys a little bit about the historical performance of the business over the last five years. And again, you can just see how, uh, you know, business is just blown up, right, coming from from you know almost zero <laughs> to 167 million dollars for the full financial year in profit and the, again on the 12 month training earnings when you walk that forward this is for the financial year in december when you walk that forward to the june 2022 12 month trailing earnings that 167 million would become 227 million dollars next slide um, so again you can see the phenomenal growth in the business quarter by quarter you know <laughs> last year what the quarters were <laughs> And then the last two quarters, he's doing $60 million uh, per quarter in the last uh, two quarters. And I expect that to get to $100 million a quarter to justify the $400 million earnings mm -hmm. that the market is basically expecting. So a little, little bit more work to do. Yeah. Next slide shows how the stock has traded since IPO, $1, boom, you know, <laughs> up to a high of about three fifty. You know, it's flattened out over $3, traded with good volume, guys, over, you know, certainly over... $180 million uh, two months ago, $150 million in the month of August, and still trading with good volume even in September at over $3. So stock's still in good demand. Mm -hmm. So junior market company guys trading, you know, over $900 million in three months. You know, when you back out the crazy first month of trading, maybe $600 million, still trading almost $200 million worth of stocks per month, which is good liquidity, great liquidity. Mm -hmm for a junior market uh, company. In fact, they're obviously punching above their weight. And I think that's the last slide that we have there. So with that, I think, uh, Kadeen, I'd like to jump straight into a couple of questions. First one for me is, you know, truth or rumor, I hear you guys are trying to raise over a billion dollars to try to grow your loan book. Well, th that's true. I mean, um, the notice was posted on the Jamaica Stock Exchange website. So basically, um, we got our no objection um, from the FSC Good. for us to go, go ahead and do a private placement, pri private placement or exempt distribution. Yep. So basically, we're looking to raise a billion dollars um, with the possibility to upsize to $1.5 billion. Excellent. Put me down for $100 million. I, I know you're good for it. <laughs> and so the idea is to raise those funds and then use that to on-lend and blow up your business. Correct, correct. Yeah. So definitely it would be to refinance some existing debt that we have, as well as look at existing opportunities for acquisitions, one. Yep. And uh, secondly, organic growth, you know. Um, I, I literally just came back from um, Bahamas, Bahamas, from, Bahamas nice. we're in Bahamas with my director, Chris Young, um, we're in Turks and Caicos, um, we're visiting different markets, we're, we're speaking to people operating in those markets to see what the climate is like for our business, um, we've also, you know, engaged legal professionals to just let us know what the, the landscape is like legally with legislations for money lending, um, what we do is we look at, you know, countries that have a high growth rate and um, serious potential. So we're definitely looking at some countries right now um, that have serious potential. As soon as those come become material, then we'll definitely announce that as well. Good deal. I want to give a shout out to, you mentioned Chris Young, and we can't not mention Ryan Reed. There's a great team in the group. Um, yeah. I'm going to call it the First Rock Private Equity Group. Yeah. 
uh, Ryan himself, uh, Chris, and, and you're obviously a part of the team. And I, I really have faith that you guys are going to do a lot. And I'm, I'm going to declare interest. We're obviously collaborating and yeah. trying to assist you guys where we can. But I have great faith in the business, and, and where it's headed to. OK, let's jump into the formal questions we, we have here. Um, how would the Bank of Jamaica's changes in regulations for micro-lenders affect the company, in your view? Well, I mean, firstly, I'd like to say that, you know, the Bank of Jamaica wrote to us and to say that they have no objection with us continuing as a money lender. Um, so it's just a matter of time before, you know, we're issued a money lending license. That's the first thing. In terms of just how we anticipate that the, the, the microfinance industry will be, obviously, there'll be consolidation, there'll be sellouts. Yep. And, uh, you know, as a money lender and one that wishes to grow, um, strategically through acquisitions, we want to ensure that we have liquidity so that when the opportunity comes, um, we can look at, we can cherry pick some good loan, loan portfolios to acquire. Good deal. So with that billion dollars you're raising and your debt book already getting past a billion dollars, mm -hmm. $2 billion, I think it's safe to say well, think this well, would be your next well, goal in terms of growing your loan book? The upsize is up to $1.5 right, billion. Deal, um, definitely, you know, when we go to raise money, we go to raise money. Yep, yep. Um, so we'll be raising that $1.5 billion. And when we raise that, obviously, that will double our loan portfolio, double our net income. So we're really looking forward to putting in the work so that you know our shareholders can be happy good deal so when you finish this raise in about you know four to six weeks time i mean mm -hmm. what's a reasonable time in your view to prudently be able to disperse that 1.5 billion dollars is well, that something you can do over well, three four months well, you think it's always good to to, to 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 check the track record yep um when we did the ipo yep. um the net proceeds that came to the company was about 220 230 million net of expenses um, and that was deployed in one month, right? And that was done with, you know, j just using, you know, our current resources. We've built out our team, we've acquired new talent, we've stepped up our marketing. So what you find now is that the demand for loans has more than doubled or tripled. Mm -hmm. People who didn't know dollar before know dollar now to come to dollar for a loan. So what you find is if we get a billion dollars, um, it's easy for us to um, unlend 300 million per month. So within, by the end of the year, all of that money will be on the road. Um, so, you know, microfinance or the lending business is definitely a business where you constantly have to raise funds once there's a demand. So we're anticipating that within, by the end of the year, we'll be able to uh, deploy, that, deploy capital. that capital. Good deal. So that's good to know. Despite all the competition, all the other folks out there, you mm -hmm. still have a good pipeline, good distribution channels to be able to dis dis disperse those loans. Yeah, I mean, so people always ask, you know, what, you know, how are we able to grow like this with, with the competition that exists? And the truth is that, you know, Dollar Financial has been run by entrepreneurs. The rest of businesses are run, are run by businessmen. Yep. Businessmen find a good business model and they stick to it. Entrepreneurs, what we do is we're running a business, uh, we're finding new ways to scale a business, new innovations, um, and we're constantly, you know, brainstorming new ideas to scale the business. I think that's, that's, that's our significant strength that we have. Got it, got it. Okay, second question I have here. Formally, Gary, I'll be coming to you in a, in a minute for the next question. Why was Guyana chosen as the ideal location for expansion outside of Jamaica? And are there plans to expand to other Caribbean territories? So you mentioned the other ones. Yeah. Uh, tell us about Guyana. Um, Guyana, I think that originally the plan was to stay within CARICOM because it creates less barrier to entry, yep. you know, based on, you know, the CARICOM treaty and all of that. So we focus on CARICOM countries that are easier to enter, easier to do business. Um, I spent a lot of time in Haiti before I went to Guyana. Um, the economy, it wasn't what we wanted to work with for want of a better way. <laughs> You know, um, so spent a lot of time in 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 Haiti. Um, what we target is emerging economies. Guyana, we knew that at the time they didn't find as much oil, mm -hmm. but we put a bet on it that they would have found the oil. And what the oil would do was create a boom for every other industry. Um, so we kind of targeted them, worked on them, and. When they blew up, we would have already been there compared to everybody else who tried to go there post, um, you know, the find, finding oil. Right. So that was kind of like our strategy for growth. And how has that experience been? So you've been there on the ground for more than two years now. Tell us about the last six months in particular. How are you feeling about the growth in Guyana and the, the potential 
So Guy and I, Guy and I's accounts are about um, nine to ten percent of the total loan portfolio. Um, in terms of, um, I think year to date we're doing about seventeen million in profit. Um, we're basically the only microfinance company there. The rest of companies are more like NGOs, more like government funded. So their way of doing business is a lot different from ours. Um, so we're we're really the only private lenders there. We literally have um, people lining up literally right. um you know um and and that gives us an opportunity to, to, to cherry pick loans um so what we do is we focus on different industries keep it diversified construction boom is happening um real construction you have the oil boom um they're, they're definitely heavily agriculture based um so a lot of companies are expanding now and we're actually looking at a second location in guyana now um a place called burbies um, next time you're in Guyana, I'll yep. take you there. Yep. Um, but, how, about um, I, how about I take you to Guyana? All right, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so definitely looking for more expansion. We've grown exponentially in, in Guyana. I mean, we got to 100 million in by the end of last year, um, and the demand is there. The only thing that, that, that stops us from growing is that we need to tap into new capital so that we can give Guyana more money so that they can continue to online. Got it. Gary Parrott, what say you, sir? First question from you today. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, my, my question is really on the bad debt side. So what has happened is that you kind of, the dollar kind of benefited um, during COVID because most of the other microfinance companies were not aggressively expanding their portfolio and, you know, trying to manage what they have. And so with aggressive growth, you have a lag effect on the bad debt side. What has been the experience so far, and what is your strategy to try and minimize bad debt? All right, so in terms of bad debt, um, during COVID, actually, you know, we've managed over the years to stay single digit when it comes to, to bad debt. During COVID, we went as high as about 15%. And, I mean, we went into a panic zone um, during COVID. Um, the country would open and close. You put in a strategy, and then you can't rely on that strategy. And what we realized when we really sat down as a team and, you know, our board of directors, all of us decided that we have to diversify and um, mitigate our, against some other risk at, on our unsecured loans. So strategically, if you look at our loan book compared to all of the other competitors, our loan book is probably 73 percent secured. And this is not secured by equipment or a TV. This is secured by real estate or a motor vehicle. Right, so it's it's with assets that are you know are, are loan to value. There's a lot of equity, you know, in these assets. Um, so that's kind of been our strength over time in terms of managing um, the delinquency. Another strategy that we use, and I'll talk about the strategies publicly because yep. I want to help the competitors. <laughs> you know, you can't operate alone, right? Yeah, I agree. Um, is that you know a lot of the competitors focus on a lot of consumer loans. They want to just go inside of a business place and give a salary deduction loan, you know, while kind of closing the doors on entrepreneurs. So we've opened the doors to entrepreneurs. We've seen entrepreneurs grow, scale their business, come back and get to the stage where, you know, commercial banks now accept them. Right. So that's kind of like our, our, our accomplishment, you know, things that we celebrate internally. Excellent. I like that strategy. Third question formally that I have here is you started out supplying loans to informal proprietors um, who didn't even have accounting records, such as market vendors. Um, do, they, do you still focus on that group, and how have you grown since? So, so definitely, um, we do, not because we're growing, means that we forget the little man. Yep, yep. They're, the, you know, they're definitely a part of the family. They've put us where we are, and we still believe that giving access to you know, credit to micro-businesses, they're the backbone of every economy. Yep, yep. Um, we still do give financing to these businesses using different methods to evaluate um, you know, during our adjudication process, simple things as, you know, the, the C's, the five C's are credit, which includes character. Mm -hmm. A lot of lenders now don't take character into consideration. But the fact is that if you know that this person has been selling at this location for the last 20 years and that person has sent three kids through college, yeah. 
this person is of good character and this person can come to Dollar Financial and the people in the community can vouch for them, right. then definitely we rely on that more than a cash flow statement, you got know? It, got it. So, so those are methods of lending that we still rely on. Our loans officers are very prudent, they understand the business. We have a very low turnover. So what you find is that our team that has been with us, they've been with us from, from, from inception. Okay. And once they come on board, they stay on board. Excellent, excellent. So tell me two more C's of, of, of lending. You collateral. Collateral. Character. Character. Um, put him in his part. Ah, <laughs> how about cash flow? I, want, yeah. I don't know. What do I know? Tell me now, uh, moving on to my fourth question. How many mm -hmm. locations do you guys currently have? And, and, and what have you done post-IPO? Have you opened up anything so, new? I mean, prior to the IPO, um, we've seen on Twitter where some of our shareholders are saying, you know, we should we should open a branch in Portmore. They were giving us, based on their experience, right, some places right. that had head, heavy foot traffic. And we took the advice. Uh, we explored Portmore, which was a great opportunity. And we actually opened a location in Portmore. Great. So how many do you have in total now? We have nine locations in Jamaica, in Jamaica and one in Guyana. Good deal. Excellent. Sixth one, how do you plan to navigate the microfinance space um, with rising interest rates occurring uh, locally and overseas, but mainly locally? Are you concerned about rising interest rates? No, I think that that will actually, you know, work in our favor. Yep. And I say that because while commercial banks constantly increase their interest rates, we, are, we have already priced our product at a higher premium because we take more risk. So what that allows us to do is stay at our pricing while they have to increase their pricing to facilitate risk that we had already made provisions for. Got it. And that will now um, convince customers will now say, you know what, we'll go to dollar instead of going to um, this institution because and they'll pay the difference in interest rate because we obviously will, you know, it's easier to get a loan from us. Right, so the gap is getting smaller, the Correct. spread between commercial banks and the rates that you're letting out is getting smaller. Good deal. And what's the average repayment period for business loans that you guys are processing? Um, average is six six months to 12 months. Okay. Six That's months. our average um, lifetime for a loan. Good deal. And then you, you, you did speak a little bit about the mix of loans. Could you just, again, so we know you're, you're not like some focused on consumer lending. How would you describe the mix of loans, your portfolio in Jamaica? In terms of you know, in, the, in terms of industry, yeah, industry, okay. So in terms of industry, I mean, you know, during COVID, COVID taught us a lot. I mean, the board of directors, you know, decided that you know, no one industry, for example, should have more than a 21, 20 percent um, concentration. Right, right. So we had put in certain policies in place to mitigate risk. Right. So what you find is that tourism, BPO, manufacturing, transportation, there is a. a a more it's spread across more than there was in the in the beginning there was probably a heavier concentration in tourism because right. we were building out from western jamaica and that's heavily tourism right. but what we've done is actually change our business model so that we actually have more concentration in different industries good so tourism terms is one big one or um, what about types of loans so for instance uh consumer loans versus mm -hmm. car loans versus business loans uh, how about that mix as well too? So, so in terms of, I think one of our bigger products now would have been what we call a one and ready, okay. which gives a you know operator opportunity to buy a taxi and put it on ah. it, it and pay their loan. Right, right. Um, that's a big product for us. We have the MediPay, okay. um, which is basically a product as it suggests medical, Help with medical yeah, okay. um, more more cosmetic, okay, um, medical like you know braces. Um, and a lot of other cosmetic stuff that got women it, like to, it. you know. <laughs> um, so what we've done is we've got very modern with what is happening, and we've really, you know, um, designed products that really could, uh, that speak into the people. You know, we've, we've recently launched a partnership where we're now financing renewables um, in the renewable energy space. So it's just to stay diversified and focus on, you know, what's relevant now. Got it, got it. And what's the staff complement of, of Dollar Financial look like, looking like these days? Um, so the funny thing is that, you know, when I started out, you know, I, I, I knew everybody's name. I know I have to be, you know, making it a point of my duty to know all of my staff at the, the, the pace that we're growing. Um, but we're heavily over, uh, over 40, um, which complements Jamaica and Guyana. 
Um, but we operate very lean. Okay. Yeah, um, in terms of our operation. Um, we have one person that might play more than one role um, in their position as well. And everybody in the business, not because you're lending, you also understand collections. Right. Got it. And are there any plans to acquire other players within the microfinance space? Always. There's always a plan for acquisition. Um, I can see where you're going with this one. Well, it, it was there. I mean, uh, I, it's, it's a rumor or truth. You may have put in a bid to acquire a, a large fish. Well, um, I think we're the largest fish right now. Have market cap almost $9 billion. Yes, but maybe by loan book? How about by loan book? I agree. You're definitely the largest market you know, cap so, in the microfinance yeah. space. But, I mean... <sighs> It's unfortunate that it, the news came out how yes, it did, yeah. but basically we have made um, An you know, offer. Uno, unofficial offers, right. well, official offers, right. um, you know, non-binding offers, um, right. not offers, but shown interest. Yes, expression of interest. Yeah. Got it. Um, in not only that company, yes. but also other companies. And others as well. Yeah, which we've gotten responses from, and, you know, as soon as that materializes, then, you know, we can put that out there, but... Um, acquisition is a part of the business model, right, just right. like opening a branch is, just like our lending alone is. Got it. Got so it, got once, it. once, once we see that there are players in the market that we think have matured, and we think that the the the, the leaders of these companies they're really looking like they're ready to exit, yep. then we'll definitely be partners for them to help them to exit got and it. help them to continue to grow. You know what they've established before. Big or small. Right? Big or small. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like the ambitions. Okay, great. So I think by now we should be having quite a few questions there in social media. Gary, uh, just back over to you. Do, do you have uh, an additional question that you'd like to ask of Kadeem? Yeah, man. I'm um, more specific. So I, a rumor has it that he has taken the Vita from Access. So is that a sign of what is to come? You know, um, he's been bouncing around it, but um, he, as I said, if he's now taking people from access, I mean, what else is he planning to take? Um, what I'll say to that is, um, I mean, I can confirm that she has left and um, she has chosen to come to Dollar. Um, that's no secret. Okay. Yeah, so um, um, w when the time is right, um, we'll definitely through the right channel, announce, you know, when, when, when she starts, what her position will be, etc. cetera. Um, what I'd like to say, as I said before, we have a low turnover. Right, right. And, you know, one of the things that was important to us as partners in the business and directors is, for example, we put in place ESOP, um, employee share offering program. Right, so, right. you know, everybody in the team, they take it very, they take their job seriously because everybody is a shareholder in the company. Right. If you're not a shareholder, no matter your position, that means you don't believe in the company. That's right. how we say it. Right. And it doesn't matter the, the, the amount of the volume of shares you own, but it adds that level of um, units or, 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 or synergy amongst the team members um, to know that we're all working towards a common goal. And it's going to attract people from the outside. It doesn't matter how you want to put it. I have no doubt. And as a consultant working with you, I would like some ESOP shares myself, too. <laughs> so, folks, let me jump over to the, <laughs> to the questions. And we've answered quite a few, but I still want to acknowledge um, folks who may have put in questions like Limitless Podcast, who asked, how soon will you be able to lend out some of that billion dollars? And you explained already that yeah. you, can, you can move that very quickly. Um, what percentage of ownership over 50% are you aiming for? And so I, I don't know if I didn't want to get into any specific questions about access financials, guys. Um, so forgive me. We, we know a, a unsolicited offer, you know, was put on the table, and they're looking at other businesses. But we didn't want to. We didn't want to get into th too many things. Um, <laughs> and there are a lot of questions coming about access. Like, will you be attending their AGM? And <laughs> someone said Marcus James signing in. Uh, so you know, funny jokes aside. Um, What's the update on the BOJ micro credit institution approval? So you, you've made your yeah, application. Made, yeah, they've so given their no objection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're just waiting on the process. Correct. But you've completed your application, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. they've already acknowledged your application and said they have no problem. Phyllis Burgess asks, congrats on the IPO. To what extent does Dollar Financial employ fintech currently, and are there plans to further explore 
that avenue for marketing, disbursement, monitoring, and collection of loans? Great question, Philip. Well, the good thing for us is, you know, I always ask about our growth, how we're able to do it. We have, from the beginning, um, employed fintech. So everything for us is cloud-based, for example, okay. Okay. Um, from, from the get-go. So um, whatever we're going to implement don't exist, right? It don't exist as yet because we've already implemented it. We're, we're strictly cloud-based, um, even our, our system that so, we so use. So folks can make their application online? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, tell us, what's this website? Definitely. So you go on dollarfinancial.com. You can go and upload your, your, your documents, whether it's your pay slip, your ID, your KYC. Um, once you upload that, that goes straight to for adjudication. You can get a response, you get an email, um, right up to you, your loan getting approved, you get a text message, your loan has been approved. Um, so we have a really integrated system I like that it. we work with. I like it. Next question comes in from David Rose. Um, as the proclaimed kill of, king of microfinance, how do you see the expansion of dollar. Now, I, th I think you've talked about that yeah. a bit. Yeah, I um, so, David, I think the king's spoken a lot about it. I don't know if you want to uh, say anything uh, else. He's, he's going to be raising up $1.5 billion. Yeah. There's lots of other things you're doing. You're looking at other territories you mentioned. Um, I think you covered that one. Um, Damien Wader, we see M24 Investments advertising on social media. Mm -hmm. In the roots of dollar, is this a play to return to providing full money services to consumers? No. Um, M24 is a cambio. Um, so we discontinued money lending. That portfolio was sold to dollar originally. Okay. And um, basically, dollar focuses on microfinance, and they focus on the cambio business. Good. Mm. And David's been asking, how's the take-up been for the Portmore branch? How's that been? It's been good. Um, we're in training mode now with the staff that, that the, you know, the new, new staff that are there now. Um, we don't just jump into lending when we get into a new location. The, right. the, the key thing is to get the, to get the staff familiar and, um, you know, take our time to grow. Got it. With the constant talks of recession, how will dollar insulate itself while expanding? Um, I think that when I hear about a recession, the fact is that we survived COVID. Yep. <laughs> um, recession, I don't think it, it kills people directly. Right, right. Um, a recession doesn't make planes stop flying. Right, right. You know, and a real, real shutdown. Um, so I think, um, I think we're pretty prepared for a recession and what might come with it, because um, we've already implemented strategies uh, from COVID, which we've decided to live by. Got it. Appreciate that. Dwight Forrester asks, Absolutely optimistic about this company's strong portfolio and brilliant leadership equals success. I'm getting it early. So he's just making a comment. Thanks, do I appreciate that yeah. comment. And classy culture, I'm very optimistic about this company. So lots of praise is coming in, Mr. King. Um, is there any timeline you have in mind for the company to reach to $3 billion loan book? So. Yeah. I think based on what you said, it sounds like it's quite imminent. Yeah, I mean, if w once we close um, this bond um, that was um, announced that we're pursuing, we hit 2.5 um, billion loan book. I mean, organically based on our our earnings and, and reinvesting that earnings, then definitely, I mean, 3 billion is not a stretch. Not a stretch at all. I think you'll be there within the next six to nine months. Um, uh, Will Win asks, do you have any ag agricultural loan products? Um, so we don't have a direct product for agriculture, but what we do is, in terms of industry, we do have a concentration there, and we do lend to that segment of the market a lot. I mean, I've spoken about it before. We're probably the only company in the past that has taken biological assets right. as collateral. <laughs> got it, got it. So, I mean... So if somebody has some cows or goats and they're well organized... Yeah, you have some red pole cow. Yeah, you work with them? Yeah, we work on it. I got a friend, Kevin. Did you hear that? I got a friend, Kevin, he's got a hundred red pole and looking to get a hundred more needs $14 million. I'll, I'll send them right over to you. Serious thing. Kevin, I hope you're watching. Um, Justine Bent, are there any plans to tap into the housing industry? She's saying mortgages. Um, no, I think, I mean, I think this is a mistake that a lot of, you know, our competitors have done yep. where, you know, you start to grow and you start to focus on something that's not who you are, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, there's a lot of customers that come to us. Even today, a customer um, was referred to me and a customer called. They explained that they want a certain type of loan. And I said, you need to go to the commercial bank for something like that. Yeah. That's not our space. Um, our rates are higher than the commercial. We're not going to put you in a position because we want to unlend. 
you know, to put you at a disadvantage. Right, right, right. So we're not going to give you a mortgage for 30 years at our rate. Yeah. It, doesn't, yeah. it wouldn't be practical. Maybe a bridging. And if Maybe somebody a bridging, is, you need a deposit. Yeah. And you have a short, in the short term, you have some income coming in. Yeah. But that's, yeah. That makes sense. Appreciate that. Chantel Halloran. Okay. Yes, yes, Gary, please. Uh, a question, just to carry us back to some other stuff. Um, can you, you mention about your acquisition and growth strategy? Um, I don't know to the extent that your shareholders have thought about the stock price depending on how you do your transaction. So a while ago, when you mentioned that you're raising a billion dollars, let's say you pay anywhere from 10 to 12 percent for that billion dollars, your average return on your portfolio is probably around 40 some percent. Right. Give or take. Um, and so therefore, that is a creative to earn it. So you're borrowing at 12, you're lending at 40, you make a 30 point spread. And I think that justifies your PE because you can continue to grow. But on the flip side, if you're doing acquisitions, um, it is not as straightforward. So, for example, let's say a company like Access, yeah? Just say so we don't know who Access is. Yeah. Um, depending on who it is, I mean, there are people who feel Access is overvalued. But more importantly, if you try to, act, to acquire Access at this current price, which might be overvalued, you would run into a situation where you'd have to raise a combination of debt and equity. And in that instance, your, your debt is going to be used towards a purchase price, which you're not going to earn as, as much as if you take the debt alone. And if you look internationally, when an entity acquires, the entity who's acquiring comes under a lot of stress in terms of the acquisition vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, and coupled with that, we are in the midst of rising interest rates. BOG has indicated another increase in interest rates. So you could be put in a position where you saddle a company with significant debt to acquire. Um, that could potentially lead to a reduction in your share price. How are you planning to mitigate and do you have a valuation that you know that you're not going to pay more than X amount? Yeah, so, As I said, so I mean, I mean my, my majority shareholders, they're in the private equity space. I'm all, the equity is also in the private equity space. Um, I can speak as well as the CEO of a dollar to say that if we're doing an acquisition, whatever company we're acquiring, they must be able to pay for themselves. That's the first rule. Um, so their earnings should be able to service, their current earnings should be able to service whatever debt that we might take on for the acquisition. If they're not able to, um, then whatever we have to reduce the price that we're offering. So um, it wouldn't be a deal for us if we're not getting it at a lower price, because um, we can't work with what you know fundamentally the, the multiples. It has to make sense in terms of just being able to service service the the, the debt that we'll acquire. So let's give an example, right? Mm -hmm. Um, let's say hypothetically you acquire access at 26, it's about $5 billion. Your book value is about $600 million now, right? So to pay for $5 billion, access is making about $300, $300 million. That's a return on that, per, on that investment of about 8%. So in that, in that scenario, if, if you are, if it's so different from if you're borrowing money at 12% and lending at 40, and mm -hmm. that's accretive. But in the instance, in the instance where you're buying something for five billion dollars to fund that, right? If it's straight equity, if it's straight debt, it's significant stress on the company. Right. If you have to raise it, you're looking at diluting current shareholders. You know. So, is acquisition of certain entities does it make sense? Why not just continue to just raise debt, invest correct, in your correct. growing your loan? That, that, that that's always our strategy that's always plan a organic growth right um especially if we're in other regions where we can grow exponentially we just put uh, we just spread the money across different regions and we grow that way um the key thing i know you're comparing that company but the key thing for us is what are we offering what are, what we're offering has nothing to do with what the share price is what we're offering has to do what with what works in our best interest. So, I mean, if based on your situation, what no, you know, but uh, your share price, you, it, 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 it all comes back to your share price. Mm -hmm. So, I hear what you're saying. As I said, if you go down the road and borrow money and increase the book, your share price will continue to increase and it will maintain your PE multiple because you have a high PE multiple because you're growing your profits. Well, well, the, the, well, 
I mean, I mean, you're a you're an investment banker, and I'm I'm more of an entrepreneur. So my approach to buying a business is going to be significantly different because you're working with multiples, and I want to say that this doesn't make any sense. But my, you know. <laughs> so that's a foolish thing, right? So that is that is your Twitter people, um, or the, the entrepreneurs, whatever. We're talking hard full numbers, yeah. right? You are your CEO. You are defending the growth of your stock. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying, if you're going after targets that is the acquisition is going to impact your ability to grow the stock, then as a shareholder in dollar. It's not something I think the company should deal with. So, in other words, twenty-six dollars don't make sense for it. Right. Maybe, maybe fourteen dollars or right. fifteen dollars um, makes sense, right? Because use an example of say an access. Access is technically a mature company. It's not growing at a rate at which dollar is growing. So one could argue that the PE that they're trading at is significantly overvalued. Right. Right. Which is all also going to be further impacted by the increase in interest rates and, and a further reduction in the PE. So if access comes down to $18, $19, then it might start to make sense. Okay, so can I ask a question? If an an, oh, an, so yes, okay, an right. investment banker question, right? Um, no, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Gary. So, so, and, and I don't like when you call any competitors' name, you know, because we don't want you pressure them, right? Okay, no, no, so, no company. So, listed company. Right, whatever. right. Can you offer a listed company to purchase them below their current market price? Yes. Okay. So, fundamentally, what I'm saying is that if the earnings cannot support whatever debt we might acquire, we're going to make an offer. Below, it can be significantly below. A stock price can be at twenty dollars, and we offer ten dollars for it, because that's what makes right. it for us. The shareholders can decide if they want to take it or not. The shareholders can decide right. that look, our stock is trading at a multiple that's way higher than market. We're probably a little bit overpriced. We'll take we'll take ten dollars in take it instead of taking the twenty. It's always making an offer if it's accepted. It's not, but we wouldn't put ourselves in a position to do an acquisition that wouldn't work for the company. I think your shareholders love that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. I like it too. So, so tell me, is is uh, is it inconceivable that in a year's time that you might do, you, you could think of doing an additional raise? How important is the junior market status mm -hmm. compared to you know your stock's doing tremendously well, the faith is strong, you can raise money at I'm just going to make up a figure at three dollars, and yeah. it'd be a great opportunity. Is it? Do you think it's Conceivable that you, you you could do an additional APO because um, cause you want to grow the business. I mean, we want to hold value for the shareholders. Yeah. If we can, uh, a lending business, strategically and fundamentally, and from the beginning of time, is you borrow the money to unlend the money. Yeah. That's the business model. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to have leverage. Yeah. You're supposed to have debt. Absolutely. Um, just like the bank, Absolutely. you know. So we're not afraid to borrow once we're making a margin okay. on the loan. So we will continue to borrow to unlend once the cost of capital um, is affordable. And you have to understand as well, once you expand into different markets, if you end up in Bahamas, for example, the cost of funding there might be lower than it is in Jamaica. We yeah. might be able to raise 10, 20 million US there easier than it is to raise 10 million US in Jamaica. And it might be at 6% or 5%. So that's one of the benefits of being in different markets. You can access capital in their capital markets at lower. So strategically, there is a lot at play. Okay, and so your preference will be to use debt rather than equity. Correct. That makes sense. Okay, let's look back at a couple more questions. I want to tackle at least two more in the 10 minutes we have left. Um, I'll take one from Chester Francis Jackson. Impressive presentation, but pardon my ignorance. Never heard of this company before. The Mayberry Flyers promoting show. I, what company is he talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, so Chester Francis Johnson says, impressive presentation, but part of my ignorance, I've never heard of this company before. If he means dollar financials, and, and Chester, I, I, I don't think you do, uh, but in case you do, it's a company that IPO'd in June. It was the largest IPO for the year. They were trying to raise 500 million, raise five billion dollars, and so five billion dollars of money certainly knew about them. So I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm hoping I'm misunderstanding you. Um, Philip Burgess, given the nature of the business and the need to raise funds often, is it likely that we will see dollar migrating to the main market at the end of the 10-year journey? 
Oh, well, that's a different thing right. now. Um, because, I mean, the tax benefit is uh, 25, 30. I mean, the, you have to remember when you're regulated as well, uh, your, your income tax increased to about 33%. Yeah. Um, so if saving 33%, is adds greater value than you know um, going to the main market then we'll we'll remain on the junior market but to be fair he did say at the end of your 10-year journey so you yeah at the end of the 10 years yeah you might think about well, raising more yeah i mean that's that's, that's that's 10 years up it's a decade from now still <laughs> you know <laughs> for a youngster like yourself that sounds way out does it jamaica insider we love that answer indeed good answer so folks like the way you responded no to apo <laughs> says Tavares donaldson and Philip Burgess, great. And then, um, 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 yeah, I think that's pretty much, um, you know, most of the comments, folks. Really appreciate the comments. It's very active out there in, uh, in social media land. And I think once King Kadeem Mers is involved, I'm not surprised uh, <laughs> by that. I think I may have had uh, two more questions left, if I'm not mistaken. Um, um, but, but I think we've covered most of them, folks. Um, I really do think we've covered most of them, and I think it's been a, a great time. Uh, Kadeen, do you have any shout-outs or, or, or comments that you want to make in general? I, I'm sure I'll have one more question up my sleeve. <laughs> I'll probably take the question. You, you, you prefer to take the question yeah. first? Yep, so $3 billion is on the horizon. I think within the next six to nine months, $400 million of profitability, that's what the market is you know, calling for. I mean, what's your dream for dollar in the next three to five years you know how do you view this business as a success what are you going to be you yeah. to judge whether you've done a good job in the next you know three to five years i mean three-year objective i mean i just want to create some value for our long-term investors um i'm not the type um i always say this and people find it surprising that i don't get up and check my stock price okay sometimes if somebody send it to me right you right. know because i'm so focused on the work at hand and what needs to be done and i think that you know at the end of the day i want dollar to be one of those stocks that are high dividend paying stocks and stocks that people you know view as a blue chip stock right so that's really my dream for dollar where people believe in the brand and its reputation um, to the point where they could know that they could they, they can buy stocks for their kids and 10 15 years from now uh, When that kid is ready for college, you know, the investment is still solid. So that's actually my dream um, For what dollar what dollar can be excellent. No, I appreciate it. I think I think that's impressive Well, I think with that uh, I, I think here is all done with questions and you know folks we missed our chairman today He was unavoidably absent, but I'm sure he'll be around next time and uh yeah. Kadeem, we really appreciate you uh being being here i'm happy that it's only gary alone can you imagine, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine what I <laughs> well no i i think you'd be fine you're, you're great you're, you're a great guy you got the light version <laughs> you got the light version excellent you did well to me you did well yeah. you did well Excellent. Well, with that, I'd like to thank our viewers for their usual support, and I'd also like to thank our special guest, Mr. King Kadeen Mears, for joining <laughs> us for our uh, forum discussions. Be sure to follow yeah, us on here. social media to stay up to date with all things forum-related, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mayberry Investments Limited. Uh, folks, keep, self, keep safe, and remember, wise investors, slow and steady wins the race. Thanks again, Kadeen. Really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, guys. The Mayberry Investments Limited Virtual Investor Forum has been the standard for investor education in Jamaica for decades where top financial minds provide comprehensive insight into the market and ideal investment strategies and opportunities for our clients. Celebrating 37 years of excellence in investment banking. The Mayberry Virtual Investor Forum. Investing in Jamaica.